Hey there, and welcome back to the Weeb Lounge. I'm Nick, and in this character spotlight, it is Ilya. Spelled with only one L, apparently, as I've uh, learned today. Now, at an initial glance, it looks like this would be like a frontline physical damage character, right? But in all actuality, she is a mid-ground support magic damage dealer. Um, yeah, very contrary to her uh, looks and such. And also, uh, she's supposed to be a lolly character. Kind of, sort of, but only part of the time. Saw the anime, you know what I'm getting at. Let's go ahead and get into her skills. Skill number one is Bleeding Blast. It is a single target attack that increases her magic attack power, but... It also consumes some hit points. Keep in mind, it's a vampire character, so, you know, the blood thing, hit points, stuff like that. Skill number two is Bloody Spear. It is a frontline damage attack, which means, you know, it's going to hit a little bit more than whatever. And also consumes some of her hit points. Okay, apparently if you're going to bring her along with, you might need a healer or something else to go with it. Her EX ability... Greatly increases her magic uh, attack power, but if you got her at that five stars, it greatly increases that magic attack power. Very, very simple. Union Burst is Vermilion Bite. It is a large frontline magic attack and heals her up a little bit. So I guess she basically spends her hit points trying to do some damage and everything, and then when she gets up, gets her TP up, does that Union Burst, bam, she does a big amount of damage and heals up pretty much what she lost. At least that's what the ideal situation would be. Now, she doesn't have any kind of six star, but she does have some special equipment. The special equipment, if I got this right, is the Dark Nacht Fang Axe. Dark Nacht? It's a big axe. Okay, we'll just leave it at that. It upgrades the Bleeding Blast skill so that it does a little bit more magic attack power, a little bit more damage, but it also increase, it takes more hit points to do it. So basically just takes her first skill there and just raises everything up above the bar a little bit. Alright, now what we usually do is we go over here to 5-5, five, five, get myself some spears, hopefully. And we throw Ilya in there. Now my Ilya is only level 100, and I say only. And we'll just get in here and let her do her thing. She is actually a pretty cool character. I do really like her. Now, Ilya is one of those characters where it's going to seem like she can do an awful lot of damage. And I mean, she is a pretty good character overall. I wanted to look at this real quick. <laughs> I always like that one, but for whatever reason. Now, in the anime, she's supposed to be like this little lolly character, little girl, right? But that's because like her power's been drained or sealed, whatever the storyline is, and when she gets her power back, she gets big busty. Think Shinobu from the Monogatari series of anime, if that's a good reference, you know, the, the donut eating lolly vampire. When she gets powerful, she gets the bigs. That's Ilya. Now, is Ilya really any all that good, uh, to be honest? Well, sadly, she's not very good. Um. You know, if she just happens to be in part of your group and you don't have all that many magic attackers and such, she can do a pretty good job. I mean, she is a fairly, you know, sturdy character, and I'm, I'm not trying to be funny there, kind of. But you're going to find that she's one of those characters that can be replaced fairly easy later on. She's not going to be doing, like, an insane amount of damage. She can be a good ma magic damage dealer. She can be. But getting a proper group to kind of go along with her skills, you know, as she's draining hit points, that makes her more vulnerable to getting attacked, getting killed. So, you know, granted, the amount of hit points it takes from her isn't all that much, but do you have the heals and or speed to get her union burst off really quick? So it's fairly conditional and in all reality, kind of a hassle. Now, I tried to look into a little bit, well, I've done an awful lot of arena and such, and I thought, okay, well, maybe she's good in arena, and it turns out she's not, and I thought maybe, okay, well, maybe there's specific fights that she's good for, and there are a few select fights that, you know, throwing her in there is actually beneficial. But overall, it's one of those characters where, you know, if you have somebody else that can do the job, chances are they can probably do it a little better, so... 
this is one of those characters where, you know, if they if she happens to show up on a banner or something, I would be like, yeah, no, it's a cool character. I really like the character design. I mean, you know, vampire, whole kind of thing, and just, just look at that. It's cool, okay? <laughs> uh, that is what it is, but overall, you know, don't be spending money on her. Um, she's going to be easily replaced, especially in the late game. Er if you get her early on, she'll work out great. Mid-game, too. End game, you'll probably never, ever even look at her. So it's up to you if you're going to spend really much time with her. But my advice would be, if she's one of your only options, fine. If there are other options, go with the other options. Like, subscribe, share, hit that notification button. And there is also a Christmas version of her that I will go over at a later date. Is she better? Is she worse? Eh, that's hard to tell.